Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back. Today I want to talk about approachable classics for modern readers. So as you guys know or you may not know, I am a huge lover of classics and I was inspired to make this video because of my last video where I talked about my top five favorite authors, favorite classic authors. So if you missed that, I will link it in the cards. You can check that out. But I was talking about the book that got me into reading classics and it made me think about what books I feel like would be good introductions to classics for modern readers that want to get more into reading classic literature. So I came up with a list of a bunch of different books, a lot of different types of books so you guys can find a recommendation for whatever mood you're in, whatever type of reader you are. So I hope that this is helpful and it maybe inspires you to get more into classic literature because my goal for this channel and my goal just in life is to make classics approachable and to spread a love of reading, to spread a love of classics, modern classics, and just modern books, just books in general. But I do love the classics. The book that first got me into reading classics that I spoke about in my last video is of course Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I won't talk too much about it in this video because I literally just spoke spoke about it. But this is by Charlotte Bronte who was an incredible author and this is a coming of age orphan story where we follow our main character Jane who she really comes into herself. She figures out what she wants to be, who she wants to be, and we follow her romantic relationships as well. She's just trying to find her place in the world and it's an incredibly beautiful story and I feel like very approachable, especially for a modern reader. I think it's quite comforting and sweet to think about how people in the past went through very similar things, if not the same feelings and emotions that we still go through today. So that's why I love classics because they are truly timeless. So Jane Eyre, cannot recommend it enough. It is a fantastic book, especially if you're newer to classic literature literature and you are a modern reader. It doesn't feel clunky and boring like I feel like classics can kind of come across as. The next one is an extremely popular book that I just read for the first time and I fell head over heels in love with it. This is for our fantasy lovers. If you love fantasy, you might have already read this book, but I hadn't and I fell in love with it. And that is The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. So this is the first book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and it was perfect. I loved it so much. I, I hate to admit this, but I am a hobbit. <laughs> I am short. I am only five feet tall. I have curly hair, which the hobbits have curly hair. And I love to be in nature. I love to garden. And as I was reading about the hobbits, I truly saw myself in them. Um, as much as I would love to be an elf, a very beautiful, tall, angelic elf, I feel like I really am a hobbit. And I loved following the hobbits and the fellowship as they go on their journey. I have heard a lot of people say that this book just feels like it's a ton of walking, and that's exactly what it is. They're trying to get somewhere, they're starting out somewhere, and they're trying to get somewhere else. But I loved just following their journey. I loved seeing the people and meeting the people that they come across and just going on this adventure with them. So The Lord of the Rings is an incredibly popular one, probably the most important fantasy book. I loved that his intention was to create English mythology with this book. I'm really not that much of a fantasy reader, but I loved this so much and I just feel like if you love fantasy, even if you don't love fantasy, you will love this book. It is beautiful and poetic, the songs, the poems in this book, just the narrative, and I did feel like it was quite approachable. I thought that the writing was going to be, and like the lore and the world building, I thought it was going to be a lot to take in and hard to understand, but it was very, very approachable, and that's why I am recommending it. This next one is for readers that like weird, creepy, eerie, murderous books. If that's your vibe, then you should definitely read Perfume by Patrick Susskind. This, the subtitle is The Story of a Murderer, and this is about a man in France who has a very acute sense of smell, and he basically wants to capture the essence and the scent of a virgin, and we follow him trying to do that. And it's very creepy, it's very eerie, but it's also beautifully written, and I think that it's just I, I don't know, I feel like more people need to read and talk about this book. I have heard a few people talk about it, but 
I feel like it deserves so much more attention and love than it is getting, so recommending it here. It's one of my favorite books to read in autumn, so that's why another thing that I want to bring it to your attention now so that maybe you can include it in your TBR this fall and autumn, so keep this on your radar. It's so great. It also has a pretty good movie adaptation as well, so yes, if you like weird, creepy, eerie books, then this might be the modern classic for you. This is from the Penguin Modern Classics collection. This next one has been getting a lot of attention on social media and I have been loving it because it deserves all the attention and all the love in the world. And that is White Nights by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I read this quite a few years ago now and it is my favorite Dostoevsky book. It is a short novella. This edition is from the Penguin Little Black Classics series and this is number 118 and this is all about love and unrequited love and it is heartwarming and heartbreaking and absolutely beautiful and it is quite short so it's very approachable in that sense. Also the writing is very approachable, it's so beautiful and I think Dostoevsky will just capture your heart in this book and it will make you want to read more of his books. I did collect some quotes for you guys. I actually just screenshot my Goodreads review because I put, when I first read this, I put a bunch of my favorite quotes from this book in my Goodreads review, so I wanted to read a few of them to give you a little taste of the writing. I am a dreamer. I have so little real life that I regard such moments as this one now to be so rare that I can't help repeating these moments in my dreams. I will dream of you all night, for an entire week, all year long." Oh my god. Oh, so good. Another one is, What will there be for me to dream about when I have already been so happy in real life beside you? Oh. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is the last one that I will share and it is so beautiful. You know, we thank some people for merely living at the same time as we do. I thank you for the fact that I met you, but I will remember you for all of my life. Oh my gosh. It's just, it's just so beautiful and you need to read it, so cannot recommend it enough. So glad that people are loving this. The next two are from the same author, and that is Virginia Woolf. So here I have Orlando and I also have Flush. Orlando is a very interesting, unique book unlike any I've ever read. It transcends time and space almost, and it's about our main character Orlando who defies gender roles and defies time. Like, time moves very strangely in this book, and it just felt like this book had been written so much more recently than when it was originally written. I feel like sometimes Virginia Woolf can be a little hard to read because her writing style is very much her stream of consciousness and sometimes the narrative can get away from me even though I've read quite a few Virginia Woolf books now, but this one I felt so captivated by, I didn't want to put it down, and I thought that the concept was just so, so interesting. It really just felt like she wrote this for the modern age, and that's why I think you should read it, and it's also just extremely approachable, I found. Um, and then the other Virginia Woolf book that I wanted to mention is this one, this is Flush. This is a fake biography about Elizabeth Barrett Browning's Cocker Spaniel named Flush, and I have a Cavalier Cocker Spaniel mix. Her name is Willow. You guys might have seen her on my channel and in my videos, but this is just such a sweet story. I love books about dogs and cats, but especially dogs because I've I've never had a cat. I say I'm a dog person, but I feel like I can't say that because I do love all animals and I've never had a cat, but I do love dogs and who doesn't love a dog book? Um, I will warn you, this has a typical dog book ending, like dog movie ending, if you catch what I'm saying. You might need a box of tissues, that's, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> but it's a really, really beautiful story about this dog and I found it very, again, approachable and easy to follow because sometimes when reading Virginia Woolf, I do feel like she can be a little bit hard to grasp, I guess. And I do think that these, if you want to read some Virginia Woolf, the most approachable ones I have found are Flush and Orlando. 
This next one is for people who love historical fiction, and that is The Moon is Down by John Steinbeck. This is also another relatively short one, so it is approachable in that sense as well. Despite Axis efforts to suppress it in fascist Italy, mere possession of the book was punishable by death. The Moon is Down was secretly translated into French, Norwegian, Danish, Dutch, Swedish, German, Italian, and Russian. Hundreds of thousands of copies circulated throughout Europe, making it by far the most popular piece of propaganda under the occupation. Few literary works of our time have demonstrated so triumphantly the power of ideas in the face of cold steel and brute force. And this was an incredible, just an incredible read as a modern reader, thinking about how the first readers read it and got hold of it and how dangerous it was to even read this book. I think that's so interesting. So I think it's approachable because the themes of how we handle war, like how our human nature comes into play, this one's beautifully written, again very easy to follow, and it's approachable because, again, not too long, and John Steinbeck writes about it in a way that's so captivating, and if you love historical fiction and haven't read this book, then I definitely recommend it. This next book I read, again, somewhat recently, and it felt so profound and it left me speechless and I do also feel like this is perfect for the conversations that we are having today and that is James Baldwin's If Beale Street Could Talk. This is a heartbreaking story about this couple, Fanny and Tish. Um, Tish is a 19 year old girl in love with Fanny, a young sculptor who is the father of her child and Fani gets imprisoned for a crime he did not commit. Tish and their families are trying to clear his name and prove that he is innocent. It was so approachable because it was easy to read. You naturally just felt so, so strongly for the characters and the conversations, the way that James Baldwin speaks about certain aspects in this book, like your place in the world and how this is a society can see you and view you and how you feel in the world, your place in it and um, your effect on the people around you. It's just the way that he writes about human nature, human dynamics, relationships, it's so beautiful and profound. And on the back, I love the blurb on the back of this book. It says, In a love story that evokes the blues, where passion and sadness are inevitably intertwined, Baldwin has created two characters so alive and profoundly realized that they are unforgettably ingrained in the American psyche. Oh, you have to read it if you haven't. It is so great so approachable and so impactful. The last two books are from the same writer and that is Oscar Wilde. We have The Picture of Dorian Gray and The Importance of Being Earnest and Other Plays. So let's talk about Dorian Gray first. Dorian Gray is a book that I think a lot of people have had their introduction to classic literature by reading. Um, I have heard a lot of people say that they found their love of classics through reading The Picture of Dorian Gray, which I'm so happy about because this book is stunning. It's beautifully written, just absolutely poetic. Like this book kind of feels like a painting, which is very appropriate because this is about Dorian Gray who gets his portrait painted and he sees that his portrait is so beautiful, it will never age, it will never get a wrinkle, it will never grow old. And he is jealous of this painting, jealous of the fact that it will stay young and beautiful forever. In essence, he makes a deal with the devil to have himself stay young and beautiful forever and have the portrait take on all of his age and faults and vices. And it's an incredibly interesting story and how this kind of just dictates the rest of Dorian's life. Um, again, it's beautifully written. The conversations are in, on creating art and art in general and ethics and human nature and relationships and our impact on the people around us and how we perceive ourselves, what beauty is. There is so much that this book captures gorgeously and it is extremely approachable. The writing is lyrical and beautiful, but not hard to understand in any way or hard to grasp. I do feel like classics get the stereotype of you have to be incredibly smart to read them, you had to have studied literature to read them and understand them, but that is definitely not the case and that is just what I'm trying to share in this video. So this one feels beautiful and intelligent, but 
not highbrow enough where like you can be proud to have read this book but it's approachable and amazing and i can't recommend it enough so i hope i'm making sense <laughs> and then we have the importance of being earnest um i want to there are other plays in this collection but i want to highlight the importance of being earnest in particular because this play is my favorite of his it is hilarious it is witty we are mainly following two couples and the two women love the name Ernest, and they say that they would fall in love and want to be with any man named Ernest. And then their counterparts, their, their male counterparts, Jack and Algernon, take on fictional identities as Ernest to capture their attention and to avoid societal obligations, and it's just so funny. I think the best thing about this play is that Oscar Wilde is making fun of his own social group, the social bracket that he was a part of. It's just poking fun at all of them, and it's amazing. Hopefully you can find an adaptation to actually watch the play as well as not only read it, because these plays obviously weren't just written to be read, but they were written to be seen. So highly recommend reading it and maybe trying to find an adaptation or a stage performance of it. Okay, here are all of the approachable classics for modern readers. I really hope that you guys enjoyed hearing about these books. I hope that maybe some of them piqued your interest and you would like to check them out. Um, if you guys like this idea and would like a part two, then definitely comment down below and give this video a thumbs up. Also, I would love to know if there are any approachable classics that I didn't mention that you love and would recommend. So definitely leave those in a comment as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed and I will see you very soon in another one. And as always, happy reading.